All right, everyone, back on the PC here. Uh, we're connecting to this guy over Ethernet, so I'm going to go ahead to my network and sharing, change adapter settings, and under local area connection here, go to properties. So what I've been told is that this guy is already on a 192.168.1. something network, right? So that's pretty standard for stuff that comes right out of the box, like any network-bound device. You're going to have to go in and set it up for your network or what you want to do. So since my computer actually is on a 192.168.0.55, or that is my current IP address, we're on the .o subnet here. I'm going to go ahead and use a trick and just add an IP address. This is optional. You can set it up uh, where the PLC will DHCP off your network, and a lot of times I'll do that and look at the DHCP client list and find out where that PLC shows up and what address it gets, and that's another super easy way to do this. But uh, just for the sake of... Uh, since I'll be connecting to this guy quite a bit and I don't want to kill my internet, uh, I will just set him up to be uh, dot .1.254, something nobody would ever give a PLC. Add that in, hit OK. So now this actual single network card on my network has two different IP addresses. So rather than going and trying to ping all that stuff, there's a the angry IP scanner I tend to use quite a bit. Let's pull him over here. And he's already set up for the range I want, so I'll just do a ping sweep of that. And let's see what he finds. Do, 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 there he is right there. See if there's anything else on this network, but I doubt it. Nope, just me at the bottom. So that, we're pretty sure, is our PLC. That's the only thing that's set up on this local network. So dot .130. So what I'll do is grab a MSTSC. That's Microsoft Terminal Services Client. It comes set up by default on uh, these machines. You can see it's actually, I've connected to this already, but the CX is in the name. So you can get that out of your DHCP client list, and you'll be set right up. So we'll connect to him. The normal account is administrator. Back off the password is typically 1 when they ship. And you can go in and change that if you want, and you should, in a deployment. And we're in. So this is the actual PLC. We got it shows us our password and stuff right there. Um, it's just Windows Embedded 7. You can see we've only got 2.53 gigs free, but that's not a big deal. This guy's not going to really do anything. You're just going to hang out. Not a whole lot going on here. Um, typical Windowsy stuff there, and then there's some back off stuff. USB. You can talk to a UPS and things like that. So. Your TwinCat system service down here might be useful to know about TwinCat. You can come in here and see what version it's running, what licenses it has here, and uh, you know we're in config mode, which is blue right there. So uh, one last thing I'll check, just show you this. Got uh, oops, not device manager, just this in general here. Um, it's an Intel Atom CPU, four gigs of RAM, 64-bit OS. There's its computer name if you want to change it and all that good stuff. So just like Windows, but the key is it's got that real-time kernel. All right, we'll start by connecting up with TwinCat now. File, New, Project. We'll get you to where I'm at here. Double-click on System and go to Choose Target. So you'll see we have Local here. That's only my local machine. That doesn't help us at all. Um, so I can uh, come in here, add a over Ethernet, and do a broadcast search. So you select the network cards that you want to broadcast from, and hopefully it'll find it. So since I set this network card up kind of funny, and I just added an extra IP address, it actually broadcasted out on the wrong subnet, and we're not going to find it. This actually is my laptop over in the corner of the room on Wi-Fi, so that doesn't help us at all. So there is another way to do this. You just type it in like so, enter host name. And so that's basically forcing it and saying, hey, go ask this computer if it's a TwinCat computer. So it'll pull the AMS net ID, which is like kind of like an IP address, only a little bit longer uh, and more specialized. It'll show the version and the OS and so on, right? So here's the, uh, the host name and the net ID. So you're adding sort of like a DNS entry, like this IP goes with this host name. So that's how we're going to talk to this PLC. And then this is where we create the route on the remote side, which actually is my side. So... Um, we will add that route. And stuff like this happens sometimes. Get host by name failed. I'm not sure exactly what all causes those sorts of problems, but it, the gist of it is if you can't ping this by host name, which I could try real fast and see. 
Let's see if uh, I can do a ping here. Blop, blop, blop. Let's see if that pings. If it doesn't, then that's why we got that problem. Yeah, so it's, it's probably because there's no name server on that. Because again, I kind of did a funny thing to set up this uh, network card. But anyway, you can do it by IP address and force it and it's not a big deal. So this is asking you to log in and password, and this is the password for the remote system. So that's that administrator, and the password is one by default. So I'll click OK on that. And you should see this X in the connected box here, and then you can just close out. It's waiting on you to add more routes. So once you close out, you can say, hey, this is my target now, and you should be able to uh, change settings and do all kinds of stuff. So here, Add new item, standard PLC project. And when that finishes, you should have an actual project. So we can just open up a main here and we'll type, uh, come in here, ver, heartbeat, heartbeat, and we'll say heartbeat equals heartbeat. Uh, plus one. Save this. Apply. Activate. Let's we'll see if we can get her going. It's typifying the code, generating the code. It made some code. It wants us to generate a trial license because we don't have a license, so that's as simple as this, and you get seven days for free. As many times as you want, which is really wonderful. This entire IDE is free, by the way. So it's saying, hey, this port doesn't exist. Oh, sorry, let me let me tell you what I did there. I clicked on login. It was very similar to that first series. So, hey, it doesn't exist. Uh, do you want to create it? Yeah, sure. And then we're sitting here. We're online, but we're not running. So I'll just click run, and boom. This is the actual PLC running this code. So I can disconnect. I could reboot my computer, come back on, reconnect, and it'll just keep counting away until it rolls over. So uh, that's the gist of it. We just got connected up. You can save your project. This doesn't need to run. You do need to do a few extra things to get it to automatically boot up that project and stuff like that, like auto start boot project. Uh, but short of that, we're connected up. We're ready to do some, uh, some IO configuration and things like that. And uh, get on with the rest of the series. So I'll catch you on the next episode. Uh, hit the playlist and it'll go right to the next one or look in the, the description and find the other one. So uh, if you like this stuff, subscribe and uh, give it a thumbs up before you go to the next video. It helps me out a lot. Thanks. Bye.